So they thought that belonged to the coal several hours ago. Well, he didn't take out the boat. He'll be caught in the storm. Do not fear. He will return safe. The great spirit Tonga looks after him. Maria, some more of your voodoo magic. And the jungle that is said. Whatever it is said, I don't believe it. Besides, this is not the jungle. This is Tonga everywhere. Maria, I've told you time and time and again that. I saw a monster out there, big as a mountain can of dead butt. There must be a devil collecting the dead. It almost got me. It's got a great long tail. Not carrying you, fool. Let's boil out there. I've seen him take that dead body right into the doctor's laboratory. Uh, son, I'll shut that. Go to bed. Yes, and I'll go to bed. But I ain't gonna sleep. Not awake. He's been dead about a couple of hours. There's no time to lose. Take the back of me right at the pedal back. That's the thunderstorm. I won't be fair. You'll be the most famous young doctor in the world. I'll be satisfied to bask in your reflected glory, sir. If, as you say, we are successful. I devote my whole life to making it work. Our experiments have been very encouraging. It's a far cry from that to the real thing. Yes, yes, I know, I know. We're not ready yet to bring a man back to life. I couldn't lose this opportunity. He was washed ashore right at my feet. He was evidently one of the crew of that ship the Coast Guard reported sunk. Yeah, probably. An ideal form of death for our purpose. You couldn't ask for a better chance. Here. the authority, sir. Do you think we're doing the right thing by performing this experiment? Certainly. If there's the slightest chance of bringing a man back to life in the doctor's duty, but it would fail. I'll take the full responsibility. There's always time to take the body back to the beach and notify the authorities of it. I hope that won't be necessary. Everybody? Ready, doctor. Scientific fact remains. We're 
かくって。What happened tonight? That man on the table. What were you and the doctor doing? You shouldn't have come in there, Elaine. Why not? Well, because, because the doctor's on the verge of a great discovery, and, and he mustn't be disturbed. That's not the reason. Not the real reason. It would be better if you forgot what you saw. But I can't. I'll never forget the look on your face when you saw me standing there. You were like, like a criminal, caught in the act of murder. Oh, David, David, you must stop it. Whatever it is he's doing is wrong. I feel it. I've sensed it for months. It's, it's something sinister, frightening. David, you must stop it. I can't. Well, then, then refuse to work with him. Go away. He needs you. He said so, time after time. He couldn't work without you. That wouldn't stop him now. But at least you would be out of it. Don't be foolish. You're young. You have a great career ahead of you. Please. Don't do anything to put yourself or your career in danger. Now, Elaine, it isn't as bad as all that. It is. I know it is. darling. Oh, there you are, my dear. I wanted to say good night. Well, I, uh, I had a headache. I couldn't sleep. Oh, that's too bad. I'll get you an aspirin. No, 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 I'm fine now. 
Good night, David. Good night. Good night, David. Good night, Doctor. Sure you don't want an aspirin? No, thanks. I'm fine. Good night, my dear. Good night, Charles. Suggesting I take out the boat. I don't handle sail very well. Oh, nonsense. Of course, you do well enough for this weather anyway. Besides, you need a rest. I've been working you too hard. You don't eat the way you should. You'll be having a dietary deficiency. Oh, I'm all right. I have too much work to do to even think of taking a rest now. Well, the moment it will take time to work out. Maybe this will ease your mind. Gives me a dirty look. Oh, she's a strange sort of person. Devoted to my wife almost as much as that dog Brutus. She's always practicing some mysterious sort of jungle rite. I don't know how Lane puts up with her. Do you suppose she had anything to do with this? I found it under my pillow this morning. Huh. I would be a bit surprised. Maria seems to have taken interest in you, my boy. This is known in the jungle as Quandreva. Quandreva? Yeah. Third goddess of Vita, head, heart, hand, and all that sort of mumbo-jumbo, Tom Elot stuff. <laughs> I lived in the jungle long enough to find out what these things mean. It's supposed to make you fall in love, but I'm already in love, sir. You are? With whom? A girl from home. Her name is Linda Sinclair. We grew up together. Huh? Why didn't you tell me? That changes my diagnosis completely. Diagnosis? Yes, I thought you had a dietary deficiency. Isn't that at all? It's a Linda deficiency. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. Well, I'll prescribe for that later. Right now, I've got to go into town to see about getting a new Westcott meter to replace the one we burned up last night. Can't continue work without it. Tell uh, Lane I'll be back by dinner time, will you? All right. right. That scar for my operation, my hair covers it completely. It's wonderful, isn't it? I wish the pain Westcott could let go on. My little one tossed all night. It was only a little headache, Maria. Have you told the young doctor? David? No. He's always buried in that messy old laboratory. I believe he's been avoiding me lately. He will no longer avoid you, my lovely one. Maria has arranged that. What have you been up to? A hard breath, the truth in the fire. There is trouble in your heart over the young doctor. Why do you say that? You have given your heart to the young doctor. A hard breath in the fire. How dare you talk like that? Maria seeks only her little one's happiness. You are young. He's young. That is only right. I don't want to hear any more about it. That's final. Another word from you and I'll have to send you away. Do you understand? Baby. Enseguida. I'd like to speak to Dr. Randolph. He ain't home, sir. Mrs. Randolph, then. I'm Inspector Norton. Police? Uh-huh. Homicide squad. If you look for homicide, we ain't got none. We don't have to look for it. It usually looks for us. Yes, sir. I'll tell Miss Randolph you're here. All right. Inspector Norton? Mrs. Randolph, I just dropped in to see the doctor, but... Uh... Oh, he had to go into town for a couple of hours, but he'll be back soon. Nothing official, I hope. Oh, no, no, I just called in to renew old acquaintance. He wants to help me out on a pretty tough case. 
The great guy, the doctor. I've known him for about 10 years. What? Longer than I've known him. We've only been married about a year. Yes, I remember reading about it. You had an accident, didn't you? Yes, sir. A severe brain injury. And they all gave you up until the doctor operated. Well, they say he performed a miracle. Well, he's probably one of the best brain specialists in all the world. But he never did have time for women until you came along. And then he went overboard. And I can't say that I blame him. Thank you, Inspector. And I suppose that's why he gave up his practice. So that he could bring you out here to recuperate. Oh, no. No, my health is fine. The doctor is... Well, perhaps you'd better discuss that with him. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, I didn't mean to be inquisitive. Looks like she fell down those stairs. Was she going to be all right, David? Yes, I think so. Yes. Yes, she'll be all right. Nothing serious. Anything I can do? No, no. Dr. Cochran can take care of her. She'll be all right. Well, in that case, I'll run along. Good day, Mrs. Randolph. Bye. Will you get me a glass of water, please? Surely. Take it easy, Maria. You're not hurt. The fetish. You have destroyed it. Fetish? Vidra will not escape. There will be a calamity in this house. Death. Violent death. This is the curse of Vidra when the fetish is destroyed. It is you who must pay the penalty. You try to destroy the magic of Vidra. This new meter will record 10,000 more units than the old one. So we'll increase the voltage on the Hessler tube, and that should do the trick. Eh? Hey, you're not listening at all, my boy. Oh, 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 forgive me, sir. I, uh, you were speaking about the Hessler tube. Yeah. What's on your mind? I've been trying to reach a decision. Perhaps it's best that I return to my regular practice. Why? Oh, give up your work? You can't. We're on the brink of success. You know it. Perhaps a few more experiments and we'll have it. Throwing away everything we worked so hard for would be a catastrophe for science. But it's mostly your work, sir. Nonsense. Your contribution has been of tremendous value. Well, you pioneered the formula. The records show it. It's money you need. No, no, it's not, not that at all. Uh, what's been bothering you, David? Your manner, if I may say so, has been rather strange lately. Well, uh... <laughs> well, perhaps it's just a case of nerves. But I've begun to imagine things, I guess even to misinterpreting intentions. Precisely. You know, for a moment you had me going. Why, I wouldn't think of losing you now. Let's forget it. Just as if nothing had happened, eh? Oh, come right in, Chad Wright. I don't want to come in, Doctor. I just want to tell you Inspector Norton is here. Oh, very well. Tell the Inspector I'll be with him immediately. Yes. I'll have him all in a moment. Oh, Doctor. I have a hunch it concerns us and the body. Oh, there goes that imagination of yours, my boy. The inspector's an old friend. He probably dropped in to pay his respects, that's all.
My little memento is intriguing, I see, Inspector. How are you, Doctor? Couldn't be better. You, Norton? Well, to tell you the truth, not so hot. Well, as your physician, I'd be very glad to give you a free physical examination. I'm not here for medical advice. No? No. You did me a great favor once, Doctor. And you helped us break the Bellamy case, and they made me inspector, remember? Yeah. I'd hate to suspect a friend of murder. Hmm. I hope you're not serious. I kid very little about murder, Doctor. Well, would you mind telling me about it? No. This is the way it adds up. Last night you found the body of a drowned fisherman and called up the Coast Guard at eight minutes past twelve. It was reported that he was washed off his boat and drowned. The coroner's examination shows, now get this, that the man had undergone a terrific electric shock. You've been conducting uh, secret scientific experiments here, right? Yes, that's right. And this morning at 9 o'clock, you uh, bought a new Westcott gauge from the Watkins Manufacturing Company. You told them that your old one had been burned out. That instrument could stand an awful lot of power before being burned out, Doctor. In fact, enough power to electrocute a man. You know, facts like yours can be quite incriminating. I suppose I'm under arrest. Oh, doggone it. No, I'm not arresting anyone yet. Why are you taking it so calmly? Why don't you get sore and try taking a sock at me? I deserve it. Sock a good friend like you, Norton? Hardly. Oh, my dear friends, you're very clever, but just a little too transparent. Oh, transparent, eh? You know, you haven't accused me of murder. You know better. I said I suspect murder. Correct. So you've built up a seemingly airtight case, and yet you won't arrest me. Why not? You're the psychiatrist. You tell me. Very well. Norton, with you, duty outweighs friendship, right? So you had, as you'd say, uh, an ulterior motive. Namely, to induce me to reveal the nature of my experiments. Just in hope that I might be able to clear you. Give me a few days more, my records are free for you to examine at will. In the meantime, I suppose I must go on trying to convict you. Don't fail to call me if you need help. Same old guy. I've got to hand it to you, Doctor. So long. Come at once, it's very important. Thank you, Shadrach. Yes. Lock the door. Hurry. The window, quickly. the subject we need at the moment. And then we'll get him back. But doctor, I thought we would discontinue our experiments until we were sure. I am sure. Well, almost sure. But we don't want another incident like the one we had with the fisherman. That was different. The man had obviously received some sort of blow, deranged him. He was insane. His actions proved it. Yes, but lack of oxygen in the bloodstream could have caused irreparable damage to the brain tissue. That could have made him insane. Oh, I've considered that. I know what happens to aviators when they're flying at high altitudes over sustained periods without oxygen. But we're dealing with death. Just think how many lives we can save every year with our process. People have been killed by drowning, accidental asphyxiation. It's worth any risk. Provided they're not dead too long. Yes, 
Every moment that passes now endangers our chance to bring him back. All right. I have 100 cc's of the revised formula ready. Good. Good morning, Maria. Good morning, my lovely one. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, my dear. Sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Where's Brutus? I haven't seen him around anywhere. Why, I, uh, I took him over to the vets. The vets? What for? Well, he was, he was acting rather strangely, and I thought he might be coming down with a distemper or something, so I thought I'd better take him over there. Well, he was all right last night. Well, it was early this morning that I began to notice it. Well, what did the vet say it was? Well, he... He couldn't tell anything right away. He advised me to leave him, you know, for observation. Well, that's too bad. I hope it isn't as serious as you think. No, it's not. Oh, by the way, you haven't congratulated David. 
Congratulate David? Yes, it's his birthday. Oh. How did you know? Well, never mind how. It is, isn't it? <laughs> Why, yes. Oh. Congratulations, David. Well, thank you. Any happy return? Thank you very much. Uh, is Dr. David Cochran here? Yes, ma'am. Come right in. Uh, just put them down here, please. Just a minute. I'll tell him you're here. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Linda! <laughs> Hello, darling. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, what a surprise. Surprise? <laughs> Yes, what brings you down here? You're telling I decided to come down for your birthday, <laughs> even before your telegram arrived. My telegram? Why, yes, I... How's that for a birthday present? Just a slight case of forgery. It was I who sent the telegram to Miss Sinclair. Oh, so that's it. You see, David's been working pretty hard lately, and as his position, I've been worried about him, so I simply wrote a prescription on a telegraph. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and the cure is instantaneous. Well, come here, my dear. I want you to meet David's fiance, Miss Sinclair. My wife. How do you do? I'm so glad you came, for David's sake. Now, perhaps he'll smile for us once in a while. <laughs> my doctor, you should have called for me sooner. He has such a lovely smile, too. Well, David, you better take Miss Sinclair up to her room, the one across from Elaine's. Yes, sir. Your breakfast is waiting for you. You must be hungry after your long ride. I am, and I won't be a minute. Thank you, sir. Well, David, my boy, as your physician, I can now pronounce your cure complete and in only one treatment. Your diagnosis of the case was very clever, doctor. <laughs> yes, and the medicine was very potent and easy to take. It seems good to see him smile again, doesn't it, my dear? Hmm? Oh, yes. Yes, it does. My oh, darling, was it that bad? What is the piece of your No me abandones. Por favor, te me sentí. Dog. 
right through the closed window. He had a mad gleam in his eye. Poor thing at the mouth. Well, perhaps you'd rather sleep in my room, dear. Oh, yes, I, I would. Tell you why, but, but if you must tell David, make him promise not to say anything to my husband about this. But I don't understand. Please, if you don't mind. Well, all right. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. We'll have to make a very thorough search. Indeed not. The less they know about, the better. But doctor supposes. Good morning, David. Oh, good morning, darling. Good morning, my dear. Good morning, Charles. I didn't expect you up quite so early, or I'd have waited breakfast for you. Yes, after keeping you up till the wee small hours, we didn't expect to see you again before lunchtime. Well, how'd you sleep, young lady? Oh, um, uh, all right. Fine. It's the air up here, dear, and the quiet. I sleep like a log. A certain content of salt spray in the air is very beneficial to the hardier types. Promotes the appetite. Excuse me, sir, but Inspector's here again. Oh, uh, well, show him into the living room, Shadrach. That's why he is. He showed himself here. Oh, he did? Well, very well. Uh, excuse me, ladies. Well, just in time for breakfast, Inspector. Breakfast, sir? Why, I had breakfast over three hours ago. Well, you are an early bird. Was there some special worm you wanted to catch? Mm-hmm. But in this case, the worm is a dog. A dog? Yeah. Your dog. Where is he? Well, he's, uh, he's at the vets over in the village. How long has he been there? Oh, almost a week, I guess. Why? Well, it couldn't have been him, I guess. Although some of the farmers around here are pretty sure that it is. They've been finding their stock dead, their throats torn, and the animals drained of their blood. Hmm. Hemomania, blood craze. Something is missing from the animal's blood, and he attempts to satisfy it by the blood of other animals. Is that fact or superstition? Oh, plain scientific fact. How do you account for this, then? One of the men swears he fired three bullets at that dog, and they went right through him, but didn't have any effect. He just turned around and walked through the closed barn door. Explain that, would you? Oh, I wish I could. Look, Norton, science is popularly supposed to have an answer to everything. But who can say where fact ends and superstition begins? Hemomania. The blood craze. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt your breakfast, Doctor. Oh, that's all right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Brutus, wasn't it, Charles? Then it was he last night, wasn't it? Yes. What have you done? What's happened to him? Well... It was an experiment. Something went wrong. I don't know what. Now he's... he's... Oh, I don't know, I don't know. How could you do such a thing? How could you? It's inhuman! Fiendish! Elaine, forgive me. Please. Darling! But I want you to take me home. To bed. Home? Oh, my darling, you just got here yesterday. I know, but I don't want to stay. Well, I don't want you to ask. What's happened? I had a frightening experience. What do you mean? A mad dog came into my room. Came in right through the closed window. 
it hadn't been for Elaine, I'm sure he would have killed me. Oh, it was terrifying and spooky. And when Elaine came in, vanished into thin air. Glenda, are you sure you weren't dreaming? Oh, you know, after Elaine, didn't she uh, heard a dog howl last night? Perhaps that was on your mind. No, it wasn't a dream. Oh, darling, let's go home, both of us. I'm scared. All right, I'll take you. Today? Well, maybe not today, but uh, the first thing in the morning. I'm sorry, sir, that you feel that way about the work. It's, well, it's quite flattering. But I'm sure you can get along without me. I know better, my boy. Well, you're so near success, too. I wish I could persuade you to stay. Oh, I'm afraid not, sir. You see, Linda has to go home. It's, uh, well, it's very important. Well, but that important, I suppose Linda has to go home. I don't see why you can't stay. Oh, it, it concerns David, too. It's, uh, well, we both have to be there as soon as possible. Oh, very mysterious. What's happened? If you don't mind, I'd rather not say, sir. It's, uh, well, it's... Uh... It, well, it's, it's simply a matter of life and death. We really must go. Well, if that's the case, I guess there's no use my trying to persuade you to stay. Perhaps it's just as well. I don't know whether you know it, young lady, but David and I have been experimenting along really dangerous lines. Very dangerous indeed. This will put a stop to it. Well, perhaps it's for the best. At least we won't make any more mistakes. Well, how long you two? If you're going to get an early start, you'll have some packing to do, David. Thank you, sir. I hope you understand that I... put it out of your mind, my boy. Good night. Good, Good night, Doctor. I thought you'd rest better in my room, so I moved your things in there. Oh, you shouldn't have done that. That wasn't necessary. I think it will be better, just in case something should happen. What about you? Aren't you afraid? No. No, I don't think he'd harm me. I close this? Not at all. Please do. Turn off the light, will you please? Good night. Good night. Thank you. 
I'm sorry, sir. Perhaps after I get Linda home, I can arrange... Don't worry her. about it, my boy. Don't worry about me either. I meant what I said. It's probably for the best. After all, who are we to presume to know? You smell something burning? Yes, it doesn't smell like wood, though. It's uh, more pungent. Acrid. Chemical. Back here. In here. going to do? Just a moment, darling. We've no time to lose. All right, doctor. Prepare the formula. That's more like it. You're all right, Doctor? Don't worry, my boy. I'm all right now. 
Good. I was afraid you'd go to pieces. I won't tell you.
I hope that you don't think that I... Smell it. It's the root of the Tarishi plant, used in the voodoo death ceremony. Maria? Yes, Maria. Give me that, David. No. I'll kill her. I'll tell you I'll kill her. Let me kill her. Have you gone mad? Let me go, David. Let me go. She's a fiend. She tried to kill Elaine. I'll put her where she can't do any more of her devilish business. Doctor, you're out of your mind. This is no solution. David, I wish you'd learn to mind your own business. Is anything wrong, sir? No, Shadrach. The doctor's just a little upset. Come on, doctor. I'll take you to your room.
Will you get your pictures and get out? Okay, Steve, okay. Just one more and I'm through. Are you sure nothing has been moved? No. That is just how I found him. Have you any idea who might have done this? I don't like to say it, but... Uh, but, uh, but what? Well, a few hours ago, I had the master and the young doctor arguing in here. My mistress' name was mentioned. I looked then. They were struggling over that knife there. Did you see Dr. Cochran kill him? No. I went quickly to my room. I was frightened. What were they arguing about? Well, the master had found out that the young doctor, my mistress... Oh, I see. Same old story. Say, Jeff, will you get a good set of fingerprints off that knife and we'll wash this up in a hurry? Okay. David, who could have done this terrible thing? I wish I knew. Poor Charles. It's dreadful. Dreadful. Now, now, Elaine, don't give way. Now, you mustn't tax yourself. You've been very ill. Dr. Cochran, I'm going to ask you to take a little trip down to headquarters with us. Why, well, certainly, Inspector. Inspector, do you have any idea as to who did this? We have a pretty good idea. All right, Scotty. Oh, here, wait a minute. Well, you it. don't think that Dave... No, we don't think. We're practically sure. Let's go. But this is ridiculous. Dr. Randolph and I were the best of friends. Yeah, yeah, no, we... I know. Come on, let's get out But, of Inspector, here. I... Elaine, that woman, Maria, I think she's at the bottom of all this. Maria? Why, she worships me. She wouldn't do anything to hurt me. No, but she'd do anything to keep you from being hurt. Yes. I guess so. I know it. David told me that it was Maria who caused... caused your accident. Why, it's impossible. Oh, well, she wouldn't. No. She didn't know you were sleeping in that room. She wanted to kill me. That dog. Somehow I feel she must be connected with that, too. Why? Why would she want to kill you, Linda? Perhaps she knew more than Dr. Randolph did about you and David. Uh, I can't believe it. Well, I'm going to the police right now. But what have fingerprints got to do with it? You'll find out. There they are, Chief. They match perfect. Thanks. I don't suppose you ever saw this before. Certainly I have. I took it away from Dr. Randolph tonight. And gave it right back to him, between the shoulder blades. That's ridiculous. That's my version. What's yours? Now listen. Dr. Randolph had found out it was Maria who had caused his wife's uh, accident. He was going to kill her. After a struggle, I took the knife away from him and took him up to his room. That isn't what Maria tells me. Maria, what does she... Maria. Linda. She's along with her. I've got to get back. You're not going anywhere. No. This guy says he knows who killed Dr. Randolph, Chief. Yes. Well, come on, spell it. What is like this? I was in the hallway. And Ms. Rounds and the dog passed by me, and I said, anything I can do for you, Ms. Rounds? And she didn't say nothing. And she went down the stairs, so I walked over to the bounce and looked down, and you know what I seen? Brutus. Brutus. Put this dag in Miss Round's hand and sent her in the room. And then I heard her groan. And then her and the dog come out. Well, it's good enough for me.
What's going on here anyway? Maria. Get Maria. Hurry. Hurry. Linda, darling. Linda. Linda. You're all right, darling. You're all right. He's go You're all right. You're all right. It's all right, darling. He's gone. He's gone. He's gone. 